Hello, YouTube. It's me, Kevin. Today, I want to do a review on my Brownells XM16A1 rifle. It's been more than a year since I purchased this rifle and I shot the crap of this rifle. Um, I shot probably 8,000 rounds already and um, I just want to do a review on this rifle after all this shooting. So first of all, um, let me talk about the history of the XM16A1. So um, during the 60s when the U.S. starting to adapt the M16, the original M16 rifle, which is the Code 601. And as we all know, it has a little bit of problem because, you know, the soldiers are not really taking care of it. And also the, the, the army told their soldiers, you know, you don't have to clean this rifle, which is completely not true. And they also changed the powder of the ammunition, which causing the high rate of cycling, full auto firing, and causing a lot of trouble, and also some parts are not being completed. So during the jungle, you know, in the jungle in Vietnam, which you know can be very harsh on those parts. Yeah. So let me go through this rifle again. So I replaced the original uh, triangular handguard from Brownells because the original one was the reproduction that was made from polymer and the original one which I put in the 1970s USGI M16 handguard um, is really solid um, it's made it's probably Bakelite excuse me and the muzzle let's talk about this three, three pound flash suppressor um, you know, it's iconic M16 look, um, as everybody knows. The early 601 also has the three pound flash suppressor, but it's a, a little bit tapered over here. Um, this one is just a reinforced later model three pound flash suppressor. It's very effective in rapid fire. It, it helps you to stay on your target way faster than the you know the A1 and A2 flash suppressor. Um, I've also heard about it that troops back in Vietnam actually use this this um, muzzle device to cut wiring. Like they just simply let me use my phone cable core as an example. Like they simply. Um, Put the wire like that and shoot a live round through it to break the wire. I I don't really know, uh, you know, if it's true or not, but um, it's possible. And the sight is the A1 front sight post with the simple round, you know, post. Okay, and I put the. I put on this original USGI M16 rifle sling. It's really good. And let me talk about the let me talk about this brass deflector here. So the early M16 does not have the brass deflector like the A2, um, which protruding a lot from the upper receiver. The early one does not have any brass deflector, or maybe this count as brass deflector. I don't know. Uh, my knowledge is limited. I have to keep learning every day, you know. So, as you can see, after all this shooting, the brass deflector obviously is gonna took some wear and tear. Um, you can see it's already deflecting a little bit. You know, it's not a big deal. It shoots awesome. It shoots very, very nice. It's a sweet shooting rifle. I don't have to repeat it again. Um, the lower receiver has the early half fins. The half fins lower receiver to prevent troops from accidentally bumping up the magazine in Vietnam jungle. Uh, it has the teardrop for assist. Um, it's very cool, very iconic looking. The stock 
is the early A1 stock without the trap door. The grip is the A1 grip without the finger grooves. And I also put an aftermarket Franklin Armory binary trigger in it to simulate the full auto functioning of the firearm. This firearm is not full auto. Uh, it's, I put a binary trigger in it, so it's legally still a semi-auto. So I also engraved the auto marking on the lower receiver. So it's a safe semi and auto. What is a binary trigger? Um, binary trigger is a trigger that actually, well, let me show you guys right here. So I'm on semi-auto mode. On semi-auto, you pull the trigger, the rifle functions, you release the trigger, you put, and you press the trigger again to fire another round. However, on binary, on binary mode, when you press the trigger, bang, a round has been fired. When the gun cycles and you release the trigger, bang, another round has been fired. So you can increase the rate of fire on your firearms, which is awesome. It's, it's a really fun looking rifle. It's a fun shooting rifle. And um, let me break this rifle down for y'all. It's kind of hard to do. Oops. Excuse me for a second. So I put an accu wedge in it because the original upper and lower kind of is a little bit wobble, but it's not a big deal. It's very common in, in AR-15. You don't have to put an accu wedge. It's just me. I have, you know, it's just me doing like OCD. And uh, um, the boat is the regular M16 boat. Uh, the finish on this rifle, um, I believe it's nickel finish. I don't believe in it's chrome, but I am going to purchase a chrome boat carrier for this rifle. After all this shooting, you can see the gas key, the gas key took a little bit damage from a bended round um, because I've shot some steel case crap in this rifle and mostly federal and, and there's one thing I want to make it clear is do not shoot wolf ammo in this rifle it's not going to function reliably at least for this rifle I've shot only 40 rounds of wolf 223 it jams like every six, seven rounds. It's just it just doesn't like wolf ammo, wolf and tula. However, it 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 functions in monarch ammo pretty good, because I believe monarch ammo probably it has something to do with their case. They put lacquering in their case, and um and they probably load their ammo a little bit hotter from my understanding yeah um, and also the the gas key the gas tube I'm sorry the gas tube um, also took a little bit deformation from from the shooting it's not a big deal you know but I'm still gonna replace them anyway I want my rifle to be a hundred percent reliable because this is my home defense rifle I don't want to take any chance and also for the sight the A1 sight is very simple to use um, you just use this tool right here this A1 sight tool you can see there's like a little clock on it you simply put it in and just adjust your sight. This adjusts the windage, the left and right. When you when you you know rotating this sight clockwise is moving to the right, and you rotating this to counterclockwise is moving to the left. And the front sight is you can see there is an up sign on it. 
the camera is not going to catch that. So there's an up, there's an up sign on it. So that means when you when you adjust the front side post, the up means like the impact of the round is going up. So yeah, it's a very easy, very simple sight. I have been using this rifle for hunting. Basically, it's, it's an all-purpose rifle for me. It's reasonably affordable. When I when I purchased this rifle, it cost me thirteen hundred dollars. But now the price has been dropped to eight hundred something. So if you are interested in purchase purchase this rifle, now is the perfect time um, to do it. And thank you guys for watching. And on the next episode, I'm going to talk about my other collections. Um, yeah, I have some really cool rifle to sh show you guys. I am looking forward to see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.